Hey guys, this is Ramon DeGracia from Washington State, the United States, and I'm here to show you how to submix in Reaper 64-bit. Now, before I start, we have to know that Reaper is different from Logic Pro. It is different from Sonar. It knows it's a digital audio workstation sitting on a laptop, and all it cares about is ones and zeros. So, everything in Reaper is called a track. And a track, here I'll move this track to the, this new track to the top, is just a plethora of inputs and outputs and receives and sends. It doesn't know what to do with this thing. And it's not going to try to define it for you. It just knows it's audio of some sort. As you start to define what it is, it'll start to figure out, oh, this is a MIDI track. Oh, this is a thing that receives things or sends things or has some kind of output and will give you more options as you define what the signal means more and more. So right now, even a bus to do submixes is considered a track in Reaper. You don't have an option to create bus, you just create a track. Here's the song we have today. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. We have a bass, drums, lead guitar, and a rhythm guitar. Today I want to submix my rhythm guitar and my bass, rhythm and bass together, and I want to have one fader to control them both. This is made very easy in Reaper, where I just take my tracks and I throw them into another track. Boom! They are now under this master track, which I'll lovingly call rhythm and bass. And for all intents and purposes, we've already done it. If we hit play right now, this fader will turn down my rhythm and bass and bring it back up. Now, what Reaper has done is not exactly routing, is not exactly the sends and receives we're expecting. All it has done is applied a single fader to these two. It hasn't done anything fancy yet. So we don't have concepts like post fader, pre fader, um, effects that are applied and where it's being routed. It simply threw this fader on and said, you're good to go. To actually make it an honest-to-God um, bus, we're going to go ahead and left-click on this input-output button on one of our child tracks and drag it up to the master track and see it becomes this little plug. It looks like a, a TSR plug. And release it. Oh, now Reaper is trying to figure out, oh, this is a bus. Now it gives us the features of, is it post-fader? Is it pre-fader? Is it pre-effects? How do I... How loud should it be? If it's audio, should it be stereo or mono? And, oops. And also it gives us um, a lot of MIDI options and starts to create MIDI buses if we need it as well. So I'll go ahead and do that for the bass mix as well. And now our rhythm and bass is an honest to God bus. And as I play it, down and up, and if I start to apply effects to uh, these, it will react as I have stated as post fader or pre fader and or pre uh, effects. Now, the one last thing you should know about Reaper is that okay, great, we've added a, a fader. Now we have three faders instead of two right here. What you can do is also do use your track manager, and there are two views for tracks in Reaper, which is your TCP, or Track Control Panel, which is right here, we've been working in it, or your MCP, or Mixer Control Panel, down here. We're going to go ahead and just click these little dots and turn off the tracks in those two. And now, we only have three faders to deal with, one for rhythm and bass, and life is much simpler. All right, that's all I got. That's how to submix in Reaper 64-bit. I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next week.